Hey guys, my name is Payne, and this is Machia, When the Promised Flower Blooms, the directorial debut of one of the most respected writers in the anime industry today, Mari Okada. While this was the first and so far only time she's been in the director's chair, she is known for being the writer in shows like Toradora, Black Butler, Wandering Sun, A Lull in the Sea, Anohana, a story which she created, Kiz Niver, or Kiz Niver, I don't know how to say that, Anthem of the Heart, and her most recent big title which came out last year, Oh Maidens in Your Savage Season, and for writing some of the best characters, best scenes, and most emotional moments in the last 15 years, while also touching on topics you don't see that often in the medium, like gender identity issues and one's psychological progression towards adulthood with a more mature tone. And in this case with Machia, the main theme is motherhood. The story follows an orphan girl named Machia, who escapes from her kingdom when an army invades, looking for the secret behind her people's ability to stop aging and always look like they're 16. While walking in the woods, she finds an ambush caravan and its only survivor, a newborn baby boy. She would later take him as her own and would name him Ariel. The movie covers a span of roughly 18 years, showcasing how, even if Ariel is the only one that is physically growing compared to a surrogate mother, their bond as mother and son are constantly changing. While there wasn't really anything to uncover about this film before its release, the bulk of the attention surrounding this film, especially here in the West, came months after the film was released in both Japan and in North America, when it was notoriously snubbed in the Best Film category at the Crunchyroll Anime Awards in early 2019, when it could have taken the spot over films like Mazinger Z, which is a film that everyone already forgot about, and Fireworks, which is total trash, and they were both nominated that year. All right, um, so the first thing that I have to say mm -hmm. is that there's something missing here. Yes, there is. Um, so one that I think a lot of the chat is calling out is Machia. Machia. Hmm. I wanted to get a little post-it note, because these boxes have, have like, the nominees on them. I wanted to get a little post-it note and then just kind of attach it. Yeah. They, yeah. they probably wouldn't have let us yeah. do that. To add insult to injury, during the actual award ceremony, the award went to a filler movie, My Hero Academia, The Two Heroes, which gave us this reaction from one of the presenters, well-known Mario Kadistan, Glass Reflection. All right, and the winner for best film is... My Hero Academia, Two Heroes. You seem a little distressed. Hey, so the good thing- Why are we still here? Just to suffer. I, and it got one more ya. award. I feel ya. I feel ya. Hey. Hey, remember that this is also a- He would later make a video talking about Machia, calling it the anime film the awards forgot, while the only plausible answer that was given about why it wasn't nominated in the first place came from one of the award show's judges, a YouTuber known as Sloan the Female Otaku, after someone asked her about it on Twitter. Why wasn't Machia when the promised flower blooms nominated for best film? That's actually pretty easy to answer. That's not our judges, us judges fault. Although um, we, uh, at least I, you know, watch a lot of anime series, Eleven Arts, who are the licensors of Machia, they are absolutely horrible advertisers. For whatever reason, they do not advertise or, you know, show commercials, show up on a bunch of social media and stuff to promote their films. You mainly hear it through word of mouth, like through other YouTubers or, you know, other Annie bloggers, but it's not enough. You know, if you follow up with G-Kids, you probably see their ads pop up on Instagram or on Twitter. You know, they have actual commercials. They show up to a ton of conventions. Eleven Arts doesn't do that. Uh, so, to be honest, I didn't know Makuya existed till much later. So, I have to say here, please don't blame that on the judges. Blame that on Eleven Arts for not really getting the word out about their film in the first place. And with how they treated the film came some terrible repercussions because the movie was only in theaters for less than a month and in barely any theaters after the first week alone. But even though Eleven Arts bombed during their campaign to promote the film and maybe laid off a couple of people in response to this, it didn't stop people from proclaiming this as the best film of 2018. And after watching this, it's definitely up there and I could make the argument that it is. 
In addition to Okada at the helm, there were some people working behind the scenes I was surprised to not hear anything about. First, there is Toshiyuki Inoue, who has an amazing resume for working for people like Hayao Miyazaki, like in the late 80s, early 90s, like his stuff. Uh, and Katsuhiro Otomo, especially with Akira, and Satoshi Kon working on stuff like Memories and Paprika, and is working on Makia as the main animator, and is the main reason why the action scenes in the film are so detailed, alongside the chief animation director, Tadashi Hiramatsu, who is known for also working on the massively popular series Yuri on Ice, and through his work, there were barely any rough spots when it came to the CG, and working on the character designs is Akihiko Yoshida, who is well-known for his work on the many installments in the Final Fantasy franchise and does a great job in not only creating a variety in the designs itself but also making it fit in this high fantasy world the movie is set in with a world much similar to something out of Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones. A fantasy story manned by an up-and-coming director showing more promise than Goro Miyazaki in Tales from Earthsea and a motherly connection that, while uncommon, is inevitably compared to Mabadu Hosoda's Wolf Children, which, in my opinion, is the biggest part of the movie. But to get into that, we've got to know more about the director herself. In March of 2017, a few months before the movie was announced, Okada released an autobiography titled From Truant to Anime Screenwriter, My Path to Anohana and Anthem of the Heart, which was later adapted into a live-action TV special that aired on September 1st, 2018 showing her early life from her issues stemming from social anxiety to being told at an early age that she wouldn't amount to anything, to, get, to getting a start writing for direct-to-video porn and transcribing interviews for magazines, to the uphill trek she had taken since then that got her to where she is today. But the one part of her life that is exemplified greatly in this film was Okada's relationship with her mother, which, to put it lightly, wasn't the greatest thing in the world. Because of how long this stayed with her, it was only a certain amount of time before she would express what happened in the form of some kind of script, but this was much bigger than that. While Okada is no stranger from writing stories about relationships, this is the first time we're seeing the main bond from her be between a mother and a son, let alone from a parent's perspective. It's with this information that makes this film feel like something that could have only been made at this time in her life could have only been made by one person and could have only been released in 2018 because of how old she is and her constantly growing outlook on motherhood and it gave off a vibe very similar in my opinion to the wind rises in the sense that it was a therapeutic experience for the person in the director's chair for wind rises it was Hayao Miyazaki looking back at his career here with Mario Kata it was her looking back at her life as Makia, the character, may have been a reflection of the person she wished her own mother could be. This theme of motherhood is explored immensely through various points in the film while making it distinctive from anything else in anime by setting it in, again, a high fantasy world and with it being set in a world like that, the relationship between Makia and Ariel are in the foreground to this grand event that's going on that I won't say much about because I consider it a spoiler, but what I can say about it is that whatever's going on, apart from this relationship, isn't explored enough to take over the story, but it is enough to develop the world without enough exposition to take you away from what most people, if not everyone, will, rem will remember from this movie. And while the pacing often changes from certain plot elements, there is a great mix of emotional moments, intense action, and everyday life compiled into under two hours 
all the while the music composed by Kenji Kawai who also worked on numerous installments of the Ghost in the Shell franchise and Mob Psycho 100 captures the medieval feel of the film while also shining more light on the sentimental scenes with all of them standing out in their own way. As an epic fantasy film, it's amazing. As the feature film debut for Mario Okada, this is a masterpiece. This is definitely up there with Satoshi Kon's Perfect Blue as one of the best debut films in anime history. But unlike Perfect Blue, which was based off of a novel, this has been called a 100% Okada film. The story is compelling, the characters are fun to watch and relate to, and was all the more emotional for me to watch. While Shu has written for some shows and movies after this and is slated to write some more in the next few years, I hope in the coming future she'll be back in the director's chair because this is a film that will make a lot of people like me tell their mom how grateful we are to have them. And with that, I'm giving Makia when the promised flower blooms a perfect 10 out of 10. I kind of have some thoughts. You seem a little distressed. Hey, so the good thing about My Hero, Two Heroes, is that we got to see a young All Might in action. That yes. clip is very good. Um, but I, and it got one more award. I feel ya. I feel ya. Hey. Hey, remember that this is also a half band voted thing as well. So mm. this is something that a lot of people picked as well. So, you know, congratulations to My Hero, Two Heroes. My Hero Academia, Two Heroes, even. And <laughs> all the nominees. Yeah, of course. Go and see these movies. There's so many great things. And, to, show, and to movies that weren't nominated. Like Machia. Yes. Mm.